On December 7, 1941, the faint glow of dawn painted the sky as Captain Outerbridge stood on the bridge of USS Ward. The atmosphere on the ship was charged as each crew member recognized the perilous and uncertain times ahead. Captain Outerbridge's gaze swept the waters, vigilant for any hint of danger. Suddenly, a sinister silhouette beneath the surface caught his eye. A Japanese mini-submarine attempting to breach Pearl Harbor's defenses. With unwavering determination, Outerbridge commanded his crew to prepare the guns. As the opening salvo rang out, a cacophony of turmoil engulfed the ship, and the captain realized their actions would have a lasting impact, as they'd just targeted the first Japanese vessel of World War II. Yet, the truth of that pivotal encounter would stay veiled in secrecy for decades, only to be unveiled 60 years later. The Birth of a Legend In the early 20th century, the world transformed at an unprecedented pace, and the United States Navy led the charge. Amidst this rapid innovation, USS Ward emerged as a new breed of destroyer, faster, stronger, and more heavily armed than any of its predecessors. Constructed with record-breaking haste to meet the urgent demands of World War I, USS Ward launched on June 1, 1918. Boasting a displacement of 1,247 long tons, her advanced propulsion system of two geared steam turbines and two shafts propelled her to a maximum speed of 35 knots. USS Ward was a force to be reckoned with, carrying four 4-inch 50 caliber guns, two 3-inch 23 caliber anti-aircraft guns, and 12 torpedo tubes, arranged in four triple mounts, capable of firing 21-inch torpedoes. Manned by 231 dedicated officers and enlisted sailors, the ship stood ready for battle. By the time tensions between Japan and the United States reached a boiling point in early 1941, USS Ward had served the Navy for over two decades. Reactivated and dispatched to Pearl Harbor, the destroyer assumed local patrol duties under the watchful eye of Captain William W. Outerbridge. As whispers of a possible Japanese attack on American soil grew louder, Captain Outerbridge steeled himself and his crew for the challenges ahead. For a time, USS Ward remained on high alert, poised for action at a moment's notice, and the crew shared unwavering resolve to defend their ship, their country, and each other, no matter the cost. Spring into Action After years of tension, Japan exploded in anger and launched a surprise attack on the U.S. naval base at Pearl Harbor on the morning of December 7, 1941. The attack marked the United States' entry into World War II and the beginning of a conflict that would shape the course of history for years to come. In the midst of the chaos and destruction, USS Ward was ready to fight. As the first shots were fired and bombs began to fall, the crew found themselves on the front lines of a battle that would define their generation. At 3.57 a.m. on that fateful morning, the coastal minesweeper Condor signaled to Ward that a periscope had been sighted. Captain Outerbridge immediately ordered the ship to begin searching for the contact. Around three hours later, Ward sighted a periscope, apparently tailing the cargo ship Antares. The submarine was attempting to enter the harbor by following Antares through the anti-submarine nets at the harbor entrance. By entering the territorial waters of a neutral country without signaling any intent to stop, the submarine was not entitled to innocent passage protections, and the neutral party had a right to use whatever means to protect its territory. For Captain Outerbridge, it was now or never. Without hesitation, the crew sprang into action. Attack. Feeling the urgency in the air, Captain Outerbridge barked orders, his voice cutting through the salt-sprayed air as the ship prepared for battle. Suddenly, Ward's guns roared to life, discharging fire and smoke as they sent a hail of steel hurtling towards the enemy submarine. The crew worked feverishly, sweat streaming down their faces as they reloaded, fired, and adjusted their aim in a well-practiced dance of destruction. Throughout the attack, the ship guarded the harbor entrance, chased down suspected subcontacts, and dropped over 130 depth charges, hitting the conning tower of the submarine 
and then dropping more depth charges, causing it to sink. It was the first American cause casualty in the Pacific theater of World War II. In the immediate aftermath of the attack, Captain Outerbridge submitted a detailed report of USS Ward's encounter with the enemy submarine, but this was met with skepticism by some senior officers who questioned whether Ward had indeed sunk an enemy vessel. As the attack on Pearl Harbor intensified, with waves of Japanese planes descending on the base, the crew continued to defend the harbor entrance, dropping more than a hundred depth charges and chasing down suspected submarine contacts. For their actions on that fateful day, Captain Outerbridge and his crew were awarded the Navy Cross, but they returned to their duties soon, as the fight had only just begun. Following Pearl Harbor, Outerbridge was moved to lead another ship, USS O'Brien. This new assignment would see him continue to serve with distinction in the Pacific Theater, eventually earning him a second Navy Cross for his actions during the Battle of the Coral Sea. Irony. In 1942, USS Ward was repurposed as a fast transport destroyer. During her service in the Pacific Theater, she earned nine battle stars for various exploits in transporting raiding parties on missions throughout the islands. From fighting off air attacks in the Solomon Islands, the Cape Gloucester invasion in December, and the assaults on Saidor, Nissan Island, Emerau, Itape, Biak, Cape San Sapor, and Morotai, Ward and her crew continued to serve as excellently as their fateful day in Pearl Harbor. Then, as the Pacific War advanced closer toward Japan, Ward assisted in operations to reclaim the Philippine Islands. Three years to the day after her historic actions, on December 7, 1944, USS Ward found herself in the midst of a maelstrom when, as part of a 70-ship convoy, she braced against a relentless onslaught of Japanese kamikazes buzzing above Ormak Bay. Suddenly, a twin-engine G4M2 bomber struck her broadside inflicting massive damage, engulfing her in flames, and allowing in massive amounts of water. With no way out, Lieutenant Richard Farwell, who had also served with her at Pearl Harbor, made the difficult choice of ordering the crew to abandon ship, and with Japanese air attack showing no signs of relenting, the decision was made to scuttle her. In a cruel twist of fate, the closest destroyer tasked with this somber duty was USS O'Brien, commanded by William Outerbridge. The former Ward captain then welcomed the crew of Ward aboard O'Brien, and, with Lieutenant Farwell once more at his side, aimed a salvo at the aft magazine. As the shells found their mark, a deafening explosion echoed across the water, and USS Ward met her demise, swallowed by the depths of the ocean she had so valiantly defended. Redemption At the dawn of the 21st century, the world had mostly forgotten about USS Ward. Skepticism about whether she had truly sunk a Japanese mini-submarine or had merely responded to a false alarm persisted for decades, leaving a shroud of doubt over the vessel's legacy. It wasn't until August 28, 2002, that scientists from the University of Hawaii discovered the sunken remains of the Japanese vessel, finally laying to rest any lingering doubts about the events that took place on that fateful day. The wreck was found in American waters, 1,200 feet beneath the sea, about three to four miles outside Pearl Harbor. The starboard side of the Japanese submarine's conning tower bore a single shell hole, clear evidence of damage from USS Ward's number three gun. More than a decade later, in 2017, USS Ward herself was discovered in Ormak Bay in the Philippines. On December 1st, the expedition crew of Microsoft co-founder Paul G. Allen's research vessel, R.B. Petrel, deployed its remotely operated vehicle, or ROV, to explore and meticulously document the remains of the vessel that had played such a pivotal role in the opening moments of World War II. The discovery of both the Japanese mini-submarine and USS Ward not only vindicated the actions of the ship and her courageous crew, but also served as a poignant reminder of the heroism displayed by those aboard during such trying times. As U.S. Pacific Fleet Commander Admiral Scott Swift poignantly stated in a press release in 2017, quote, The USS Ward found herself in the crucible of American history, at the intersection of a peacetime navy and war footing. She took decisive, effective, and unflinching action despite the uncertain waters. Now, 76 years on, 
Her example continues to inform our naval posture and inspire future generations. Thank you for watching my video. Subscribe to Dark Seas for more gripping historical accounts like the incredible story of USS Ward. Our Dark Documentaries channels offer a vast array of riveting videos that take you on a journey through some of the most intense moments in history. Don't miss out on the action, and stay tuned for more.